Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Holman United Methodist Church, where our vision is to be a place where bells are rung as we gather for dynamic worship, grow through inspired learning, and go into joyful service to live the gospel of Jesus Christ. And our mission is to fulfill the Great Commission by inviting people into discipleship with Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Childcare announcement. Safe and secure childcare is available for five years and under. Please take your little ones to the nursery now through the rear entrance of the sanctuary. An usher or security guard can direct you. Let's be in the spirit of thanksgiving, thanking God for this beautiful crisp Sunday morning as we are here in the sanctuary to give him his just due praise. Please rise as you are able for the call to worship. Sing to our God a new song. The Holy One's might is not found in destruction, but in steadfast love and constant faithfulness. These gifts are not for us alone. They are for one and all. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into song of praise. Let all creation praise the Lord. Now, before I take, we take our seats, let's join in praise and worship, singing, Come Christians, join to sing number 158 in the United Methodist Hymnal. You may be seated. The Holman Choir will bring the Ministry of Music, singing to us, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, arranged by Tom Fetik. <laughs>
Good morning, Holman. Uh, a reminder, if you have children five and under, child care is available. And can we clap our hands for child care? <laughs> this time we come together for corporate prayer. The names that we're remembering this morning in particular in your bulletin, uh, Gwinnett Parker, Ilana Bailey-Williams, James Bailey, Helen Harris, Laureen Flanagan, Leonard White, Dr. Harold Jordan, Larry Turner, Dr. Barbara Lake, Brigitte Thompson, people of Los Angeles, Haiti, Gaza, and the people of Texas who are experiencing or recovering from a flood. Undoubtedly, these are not everyone that we're concerned about today. Undoubtedly, you might have ones that you would want to lift up in prayer. We offer this moment for you to do that verbally, to say their names or say those concerns out loud. We do that now. God, as we find our way, crawl our way, kneel our way, pray our way to your throne of grace, we look for your mercy there. These names we've lifted up, these concerns we've lifted up, these cities we've lifted up, we know that you know all about them. So we leave it to you, God who is called love, God who is called good. We leave it to you for you to show up as healing, for you to show up as a peacemaker, for you to show up as a way maker, for you to show up as a deliverer. Show up, God, we pray. Show up. And when we run out of words, when our, our, our prayers become feeble and ineffective and ineffectual, we find our way back to Jesus teaching his disciples to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and all the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is found in the New Testament. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. For today's scripture, we turn to the New Living Translation of the Gospel according to Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. As the Holman Choir now continues in its ministry of music, with Cantadad Al Sonor, a Brazilian folk song arranged by Ronald A. Nelson. Following the selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Christian Washington, who will bring the message for today, separate and unequal. Again, separate and unequal.
Amen. Show some love for our home and choir. And can y'all just do me a favor and show some love for the maestro who serves us so faithfully. God bless you. You know where we're going right now. Say it. I am significant. Because God says so. I am significant. And I was created to do significant things. Now find somebody else in the room, look them directly in the eye and tell them you are significant. significant. Oh, you got to do better than that. You are significant significant. because God says so. so. You are significant significant. and you were created created. to do significant things. (laughs) And as the body of Christ and Holman United Methodist Church together, we all say we are significant significant. because God says so. We are significant and we were created to do significant things. Now clap your hands, oh ye people, clap your hands. Always a song stuck in my head, you know that. And this week, this week, for whatever reason, as I was studying, all I could think about was, um, If you want to know where I'm going, where I'm going. Chorus, chorus, where you going? I'm going up yonder, going up yonder, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. Tremaine, we go. Oh, I'm going up yonder. Come on, y'all. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. You know, there is... Yeah, there is something in, can I just say it like this? There's something in our music that carries with it almost at the cellular level, our memories, how we made it over, how we got over, how we survived. Science tells us that memories actually can be embedded in our DNA at the cellular level, that we are connected to our ancestors and their pain and trauma, but we're also connected to their joy and resilience. We're connected to our parents and our parents' parents and their experiences throughout the the 20th century in particular, but we're also connected to our own experiences and the things that we've seen and and moved through in this life. Ah, 1992, Andrew Hacker, Dr. Andrew Hacker at Queens College in New York, published a study in a book called Two Americas. Uh, Two Americas, one black, one white. Two Americas, separate, hostile, and unequal. He was chronicling how racism had been systemically embedded in the culture of America, such that it created disparities Disparities in wealth, disparities in educational attainment, disparities in health care, disparities that would, con- would, would create a permanent division between what are called classes. A permanent division among races. And that if nothing was done, he said in 1992, if we don't redress this now, If we don't deal with this now, this will not only become a permanent condition, but it could metastasize into something even worse. He said that in 1992, around May of 1992. Four years ago in May, the entire world was galvanized on May 25th for nine minutes and 29 seconds, where we watched a made-for-television HD lynching take place where we saw George Floyd on the ground with a knee on his neck for nearly 10 minutes 
Many of those minutes he lie there limp and already dead. Memories stay with us. Memories are passed on from generation to generation. But there's some things we, we need to never forget. There's some things we need to never forget so they're never repeated. This separate and unequal America that Hacker spoke about is not new. And it's intentional. I know that my sermons have mostly been about love and overcoming fear. But today is Cinco de Mayo. A day that we celebrate liberation. A day that we celebrate people coming out of oppression and bondage. So if you don't mind, I'd like to offer up uh, a contextual view of how our religion has been used as a tool of our oppressors. I call it Jim Crow Kiss Christianity. But the hopeful side of this is that I don't want to just leave us there with the facts. I also want to offer how we overcome it. Uh, scripture says that you will know the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. The truth, in this case, was the story of Jesus, the story that we call the gospel, the, the story that starts in the Pentateuch and starts in the, the Old Covenant, what we call the Hebrew Bible, and moves on through the, the story of Jesus and then the story of those who followed him. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That word set there is actually better translated, make you free. A better translation, the Christian Washington translation would be, you shall know the truth, and the truth will change your name to freedom. But what happens when you don't get the whole truth? Our ancestors came here, and from 1619 to the middle of the 1800s, slavery was not only legal, but justified by something called the Slave's Bible. A Bible that conveniently left out things like, I don't know, liberation, exodus. <laughs> conveniently left out anything that would cause those in bondage to feel like knowing God changes their status here. In fact, in Virginia in particular, they passed laws because those who were Quakers, those who were evangelicals of their day, actually made the argument that once someone becomes saved, and we, you know we need to get these Negroes saved. We know we need to get these savages saved. We know we need to get them to know Jesus and follow the Bible. We know that. Well, when they were successful at doing that, and they handed us this Bible, and they gave us this religion, some said, well, once they become Christian, they have to be freed, right? If they're free, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And the Virginia legislature said, strike that. That's not in the slave Bible. And they passed laws that said that if you become Christian, if you get baptized, you retain the status in this world you had before the baptism. Yes, eternally you could go to heaven. Yes, eternally you are saved. Yes, eternally you are free, but not down here. <laughs> Virginia Save Quotes said this. Years later, we get to a place where we get a three-fifths compromise. See, the first 170 years of slavery, people who looked like us were zero-fifths human. We were tools. We were called chattel. Three-fifths compromise comes along, and that's only because the southern slave owners wanted to count all of us as, in the population so they could get more legislative power. 
Now, we wouldn't get a vote. We wouldn't have any, we'd still be chattel slaves. But if they could count our bodies, then they get more seats in Congress. Are you following me? And the compromise from the North was, no, we'll only count them as three-fifths human. So you only get counted five, three for every five. It still gave the South power and gave them more seats. But you see where we're going here? If people can actually call you less than human, they can do anything they want with you. <sighs> but what, God, what, what those people meant for evil, God had another plan. See, they handed us this slave Bible with the idea that what, what we want you to believe is that you get saved here but you get free in heaven, right? We took that and we started singing, steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus. I ain't got long to stay here. My Lord calls me. He calls me by the thunder. We start singing songs of heaven. We start looking up and that one hour, two hours, three hours we had on a Sunday, we start looking up and singing up and getting our heads up and saying, we're going to get out of here someday. We're going to get down. We're going to get out of here. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. We sang these songs of escape. We sang these songs of getting out of here and going to a place where nobody can turn us away. Going to a place where we actually have full status as citizens. Going to a place where we're no longer black or white, it says. That everyone, four and twenty elders, all of us will gather around a throne and sing, holy, 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 up there. There's a mansion up there for me. There are gold streets up there for me. And I, if I can just, when I get out of here, I get to go to a better place. We shouted our troubles over. We sang our troubles over in these songs of escape <sighs> but white supremacy racism classism they're shape shifters they're adaptive systems they change with the times they change and, and create new tactics to get to the same place as things change sure things changed and we got to, to we got to a place where we created uh, uh, with Plessy versus Ferguson separate but equal Jim Crow Jim Crow was actually a minstrel white man in blackface dressed like a crow jumping around because that's how they saw us. Jump, Jim Crow, jump. Jump, Jim Crow, jump. Jump, Jim Crow, jump! We took that and went to church. We turned our misery into music. And our misery, our misery became get right church and let's go home. Get right, church, and let's go home. Get right, church. Get right, church. Get right, church, and let's go home. Oh, it became these songs that led us to jump and shout and, and leap and get all of the stuff out on, Mon on Sunday so we don't come and cut anybody's throat on Monday. We, we didn't have therapy. We had church. And we had church that would give us the opportunity to say, ah! Hallelujah! I'm saying hallelujah when I really want to put my hands around somebody's throat. I'm saying hallelujah! When I really want to like give people what they deserve and eye for an eye, but I'm saying hallelujah! But we're still singing songs of escape. See, Jim Crow was get saved now but stay in your place. Huh? 
get free when you die. The, the difference was now we are segregated. Now we are in Babylon. Funny thing happened in Babylon for the uh, children of Israel. They didn't shrink. They grew. Funny thing happened to us in Jim Crow. You, gave, you said we had to be amongst ourselves. You said we couldn't cross over to certain neighborhoods. We created our own neighborhoods. You said we couldn't do white folk stuff. We did black folk stuff. Black doctors, black lawyers, black police officers, black professors, black institutions. We built and grew. It was in segregation that we learned how to speak. We found our voice. It's in segregation that we learned how to lead. Our, our leaders, our political, our politics came out of segregation. Came out of us huddling together saying, well, if you're not going to watch us, we're going to get over here and plot. We didn't shrink. We got to plotting. We got to scheming. We got to strategizing. And out of that came the civil rights movement, came an uprising, uh, of uprising from every pole, from the any means necessary folks to the folks who say, I will let you beat on me just to show you what love really looks like. Civil rights movement led to a couple of laws being passed, Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act in the 60s, mid-60s. Mid but it also led to this fallacy called we now live in a colorblind nation. A colorblind nation because some of those doctors and lawyers that were down in our neighborhood now were moving to the hills. Well, we're moving on up <laughs> to the west side. Deluxe apartment on Wilshire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We moved on up, moved on out. And, and, our, and, and our songs changed. Ah, but as I said before, oppression is a shapeshifter. Oppression is, is, is adept at adapting to what's going on now. Yes, we can live anywhere. Yes, we can vote. Yes, we have certain rights and privileges that we didn't have before that our parents died for and our ancestors died for. They were looking up and hoping that one day, one of these days, they, we'd be here. But you know what, they, what, what came from the enemy to thwart that? Rapture culture. Rapture culture. Get right or get left. We moved into the 70s and 80s, the proliferation of folk who would prophetically pro say that eschatologically God could come any moment now. There are roars and rumors of wars. God and Gog and Magog. There are uh, all kinds of calamities in the earth. The signs are lining up. It's lining up. We had 24-hour Christian television telling us every day that Jesus is coming not only soon, he's coming tomorrow. So get right or get left. That the rapture is coming, the rapture is coming. And what that did, what it made, it made us all focus in on ourselves. I got to get mine. You got to get Joe's. I need a personal savior now. Not a savior who's about the liberation of everyone or the liberation of our race in particular. No, it's about me now. It's about me and my house, my mortgage my salvation, what I'm going to do for eternity. It's only about me. And if I can get your eyes off of being interdependent and I get you the independence and I can make you ineffective. And it worked. We built huge churches. The mega churches start springing up everywhere. Why? Because everyone was scared to death. 2000, zero, zero, party over, oops, out of time. Everyone was thinking and, and feeling like all those left behind books were actually going to happen any minute. Those horrible left behind movies were real and, and that, that, that the rapture was coming, that one day I'd be sitting here and the person I love would be gone or I'd be gone and they'd be left behind. We got to get saved right now. We got to get saved right now. I must get saved right now. If you don't see it, let me just peel it back the layers to you. The game is to keep you looking up for freedom. 
That freedom is something out there, up there in the clouds. And if I can keep your head in the clouds, I can rob you blind down here. Yeah. Musicians call it misdirection. Yeah. What I'm really doing is over here, but I got you looking over here. I got you singing going up yonder. I got you singing tomorrow. Forget about tomorrow. Better choose the Lord today. I started this much too high. For tomorrow, (laughs) very well might be too late. Tomorrow could be too late. I still got you looking up. I still got you looking for some way to escape here. We're singing a song of escape. But that time has come and passed. Our ancestors got here with a song of escape and we, they needed that song of escape to survive the, the horrors of slavery. Their, their progeny, they survived Jim Crow with songs of escape because they had to survive this disparity here. But now that we're in this colorblind, post-civil rights, mass incarceration era, we need a new song. Not a song of escape. We need to understand what we say in the Lord's Prayer every day. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. The gospel is that heaven is coming to earth. The gospel is that the way that we see heaven, all the mansions, all the freedom, all the liberation, that's supposed to happen here. That the job of Christians is to usher in an age of heaven on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. We need to get our heads out of the clouds, out of the things that would make it about just me getting to some place out there and realize this is about us. This is about humanity making it to a place right here, making a place right here called heaven on earth. Close with a couple of words from one of my favorite theologians, Dr. James Cone, passed a few years ago, not long ago. Uh, called the father of black liberation theology. Changed my life reading his work. The idea that Jesus could be black. He had to have security. (laughs) Cone said this. Cone wrote a book that uh, I, I recommend to everyone called The Cross and the Lynching Tree. The Cross and the Lynching Tree, where he connected what happened at the cross to something we all can understand the horrors of called lynching in this country. That Jesus did not have some celebrated death up there. He was lynched. It was violent. It was corrupt. It was to send a message to people that this will happen to you if you go against the status quo. Lynching is the same thing. In the cross and lynching tree, he said that Jesus, through the cross, undoubtedly said, that I am in solidarity with the suffering of the, of the oppressed. Thurman said it before him that he's the God of the disinherited. But Jesus didn't just die in solidarity with the oppressed. Jesus, three days later, rose again. And the way that Cone put it was this way. Yes, Jesus, uh, by the cross, was in solidarity with the suffering of the oppressed. But three days later, Jesus showed us that evil does not have the last word. Oh, come on. Come on now. All right, so two kinds of time, at least. Chronos, which is going from A to B. One, two, three, four, five. Chronologically time. Uh, the time that we operate in, generally speaking. But God operates in a different realm of time we call kairos, which means that any time can be the right time for God. Because God's out of time, out of time, outside of time. Any time can be the right time for God. So God can decide to drop something in right there and make a difference. 
Moses, Joshua, prophets. Okay, let me put on a meat suit myself. Me. <laughs> in Cairo's time, God drops in when God drops in. See, evil doesn't get the last word. It may seem like it's taking a long time. But the, the new songs we should sing are the ones that say it's been a long time coming, but I know a change going to come. We need to be singing songs that say it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. We need to be in those places. Maybe these aren't your gospel music hit makers. Maybe people like Stevie Wonder and, and Marvin Gaye and K-Dot, Kendrick Lamar. Maybe th <laughs> three people going, we knew what you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe people like that aren't the ones on your playlist, Christian folk. God bless you. But I'm telling you, the new song we're singing is not a song of escape. It's a song of you got to deal with all of us. It's a song of we all rise together. It's a song of it may not happen when we want it to happen or exactly on the timing that we have, but it's going to happen. It's going to be all right. We will rise. It's been a long time coming, but a change is going to come. Beloved, the evil plot of this world is to get you to think it's all about you. The thing that keeps oppressed people oppressed is the ability to, to fractionize them, to factionize them, to get them to go to their corners. I am Greek and you're not. Earlier in our, in, our, in our history, not now, this doesn't happen anymore, I'm light-skinned and you're not. I look like Michael Jordan and you don't. You know, chocolate and ball came in for a while, so I, I was that guy for a minute. It's to divide and conquer. And it's an old, old story. It's an old, old strategy that just keeps morphing in different ways. Don't fall for it, Holman. Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it even when you get to a place where you feel despair and feel like things are getting worse, things are getting redressed, things are getting taken away. Freedoms we had today aren't freedoms we'll have tomorrow, that things are going back to where they were. When you get to a place where you start feeling like that about your own stuff, think about it from a collective and think about where God has brought us from. See, we can't operate in the escape energy. We got to operate in the resurrection energy. We got to operate in the three days later energy. This is not about the cross and the tree. And if I wanted to expand that, I'd say that I'd say the cross, the tree, and the knee. But Jesus didn't die in vain. He got up. Those people on those lynching posts, those people who are on a tree hanging. They didn't die in vain. Folk fought. Folk died. Folk bled. Folk sacrificed. Folk fleed. Folk did everything they could to get us here in these suits right now. They didn't die in vain. And Floyd didn't die in vain. I'm here to say that for a minute and a half, even Amazon had Black Lives Matter on their banner. What we can't do is let it go back. I'm four years late with y'all, but I've been saying this for four years. We cannot let it go back. We cannot let evil win. 
We cannot let evil win because evil in Scripture does not get the last word. We are people of a resurrected Christ. We are people of folk who survived the Middle Passage. We are people who survived Jim Crow. We are people who survived a colorblind society that put us all in jail. We are people who survived the factionalization of us, making us into classes among ourselves. We survived all that. It's time to thrive now, people. It is time to stop just surviving, but we only thrive together. Together. As we transition into a response to this word in Holy Communion, I want you to be thinking about the sacrifice of Jesus, but the fact that you're drinking uh, the representation of his blood and eating the representation of his broken body. I want you to also realize that we go down on our knees to do this, but when we rise up, it's three days later. When we sit at the table and kneel and take the elements, yes, that is talking about the death and the martyrdom of Jesus, but when y'all rise up today, rise up knowing evil did not win. And evil will not win on our watch. In your hymnal, we have what we call the Apostles' Creed. Uh, page 881. I invite you to turn there now. Theodore will lead you in the Apostles' Creed as we prepare to come to the Lord's table. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead, and buried. You may be seated. Please turn to page 12 in the Methodist hymnal as we continue in the service of word and table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We offer this prayer as a corporate prayer. Now, in silence, take your own prayers, petitions. Take your repentance to God in silence now. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thank you. Glory to God. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Now let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the
holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night which he gave up his life for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, broken for you, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ suffering for us, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father. Now we'll serve those who will be serving you. Beloved, now take the cup. The bread, which is the body of Christ, take, eat, and every time you do, remember. And now the cup of Christ. It's the blood of Christ shed for you. Take, drink, and every time you do, remember.
come to the altar and kneel as you are able. Take the bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take, eat, and every time you do, remember. And now the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take, drink, and every time you do, remember. Now rise in God's grace. Go in God's peace. Come to the altar and kneel as you are able. Take the bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take, eat, and every time you do, remember. And now the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the remission of your sins. Take, drink, and every time you do, remember. Now rise, beloved, in God's grace. Go in God's peace. Come to the table. Kneel as you are able. Take the bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take, eat, and every time you do, remember. Now take the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for the remission of your sins. Take, drink, and every time you do, remember. Now rise in God's grace and go in God's peace. table, kneel as you are able. Take the bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take, eat, and every time you do, remember. Now take the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the remission of your sins. Take, drink, and every time you do, Remember. Now rise in God's grace. Go in God's peace. Choir. Take the bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take, eat, and every time you do, remember. Now the cup, blood of Christ shed for you. Take, drink, and every time you do, I want you to remember.
I don't. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't believe. Father, send your blessings to us who stand in solidarity with one who stood in solidarity with the suffering of the oppressed. As we have partaken in your table, make us those who know the truth. Change our name to freedom so that we might be your instruments of freedom for our people and all people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Foster Care Awareness Month this month. Clap for that. <laughs> Many of y'all know I'm the 29th foster child of Dorothy in Poindexter, Washington. Number 29, they kept me and they kept number one. Uh, 27 in between. Uh, I am here because of God's hand on my life. Yeah. I am here. I'm here because I had really good parents. I didn't come through my mom's womb, but that's my mama. And parenting is as parenting does. Nancy Harris has dedicated her life to the cause of people like me and making a life better for people like how I, like people who start like I started. Um, Over the course of this month, we'll be having moments where we talk about foster care and and, and lifting up the blessing and the beauty of it. And I can't think of anybody better in our congregation than Nancy Harris to do that. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, and to God be the glory. Good morning, home and family. Psalms 82 verse three says, defend the cause of the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and the oppressed. We are called as people of God to defend and stand up for our children and to defend and stand up for our vulnerable families. This month, as we know, has has been said, uh, Pastor Washington, so eloquently, this is Foster Care Awareness Month. Uh, There in 2000, I'm sorry, in 2023, there were over 23,000 families that were impacted by foster care and the child welfare system, and 24% of that were black families. The child welfare system in L.A. County is black and brown, majority, over 80%. We have to be the ones, if not us who, that stand up and provide the support for our children and for our families. It is because of the love of the Washingtons that we have Pastor Christian standing here today. And we all know, now believe me, I am not um, the fostering type. Let me just tell you all, I, I am utilizing my gifts in other ways and everyone can do something. That is our motto. We are blessed because Holman has been at the forefront of this from the very beginning, not only just recently in support of myself and the Faith Foster Families Network, but the Children, Youth, and Family Collaborative, led by our sister Lydia Sincor Templeton, was birthed out of Holman United Methodist Church. So Holman family, this is nothing new for you. We just want to continue, and we are continuing, by the grace of God and a few of our saints here uh, in, at Holman, we are going to have a beautiful family visitation site that's set aside in our Edgar Love Education Building where families can utilize the time to reconnect and bond and try to reunite with their children. So we have that space, beautiful space that we have here at Holman. 
as well as other space that has been set aside for the dedication for us to wrap around our children that are in need. So I want to thank the Holman family, because again, this is nothing new for you all, but I want to thank you for your continued support of not only myself and my sister Lydia, uh, Sincor Templeton, who was part of 3FN. I want to just take a moment to acknowledge Reverend Oliver Bowie, who is in uh, with us today, who is one of our founding uh, board members of the Faith Foster Family Network. I just want to continue to keep this on your mind, that we all can do something to support foster children, and more importantly, our children become foster children because our families are in trouble. It's our families that we also need to wrap around to make sure that we don't have children that go into systems and go where there's no homes. Lastly, I just want to say on this Foster Care Awareness Month that there are some saints, uh, many saints here at Holman, but over this time, over the last four or five years, there's been some saints and a group of people that have faithfully contributed to the Faith Foster Families Network in the form of grocery gift cards. Every month, I get at least anywhere from $50 to $100 in grocery gift cards that are dedicated that we, in turn, give out to transition age youth, those young people that are coming out of the foster system and trying to integrate into society. That's a whole nother story. Um, don't have time for that. Uh, but I just want you to know uh, that's an illustration that everybody can do something. We have the power, and even though it may seem small, even though you may say to yourself, I've got, well, what can $25 do? Food insecurity is real, you all. Food insecurity is real. And our young people, uh, there's a whole uh, ecosystem of, you know, as you know, the people that are hungry every day, need homes and need families. So just think. Just think to yourself, and as you sit here, and as we embark on this month, everyone can do something. So once again, I thank you, Holman family, for your love and support, and we will continue to try to do the work that Jesus has called us to do, and that is take care of our beloved community. Thank you, and thank you, Pastor Christian. Ways to give announcements. During this moment in our service, when we receive offerings, I invite you to consider all the ways of giving. You might drop off your envelope as you leave the sanctuary, make a secure donation online with Giblethy Give, and Vanco, scan the QR code on the back of your worship bulletin, or send a check to the address listed on the front of the bulletin. Take advantage of the radio broadcast sponsorship discount to share the message with those who are sick, shut in, or far away. Or adorn the altar with a spray of flowers to celebrate an occasion or honor a loved one. To order flowers or sponsor a radio broadcast, visit the Holman website or contact Holman at HolmanUMC.com. There are many avenues of giving. Prayerfully consider them and let your heart lead you to the offering that best honors your relationship with God. We thank you for your continued generosity in support of the mission and vision of Holman United Methodist Church. Our worship bulletin announces meetings, services, events, and opportunities at Holman in the community. Today, I would like to highlight the following. Celebrate motherhood in all its flavors on Mother's Day at home in United Methodist Church. Join United Women in Faith at both 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. services as they honor the oldest mother in attendance, the mother with the most children present, the mother with the most generations present, and the mother with the youngest child, the child needs to be present as well. Receive a rose to acknowledge maternity 
honor a mother figure or express the desire to become a mother. Then stay on for fellowship in Whitehall where the photo booths return and roving photographers will capture memories of the day. Stay tuned for the Discovery Significance Boot Count. Turning vision into a plan, our next Wednesday night live series, beginning May 15th at 6.30 p.m. in LL White Hall. Discover Significant Boot Camp is a transformative Christian workshop where participants engage in journey of self-discovery and growth guided by faith and empathy. Pick up a flyer in the rear of the sanctuary and register today. Sunday school is back. Children ages five to 12 years old are invited to join Ms. Deborah Mitchell from 9.30 a.m. till 10.30 a.m. in Johnson Chapel, LL White Hall is available for parents during the Sunday school hour. A digital copy of today's Sunday school lesson is available at the home and website and via the link on the back of our worship bulletin. Please connect with us as we gather for dynamic worship, grow through inspired learning, and go into joyful service to live the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your continued partnership in ministry. God bless you and have a wonderful Sunday. Before our choral benediction, I want to give you two reminders. One, um, our new pastor is coming and has offered a survey for us to fill out this week and next. Uh, you can pick up a paper version of it on the way out or find more information about it in the e-ringer, uh, bell ringer, and all of our online communications as well. Uh, please get that back as quickly as possible. We want to get at least 100 of them back. We need yours. God bless you on that. Secondly, uh, I preached a whole sermon about us being in solidarity with each other. So um, I'm going to take a little pastor's privilege right now and ask you, for this entire month, bring grocery gift cards. Bring them. Nancy, we're going we're gonna to overwhelm you. It ain't going to be $100 in gift cards. I love that. Thank God. I'm, that's going to be helpful for anybody. But we're going to do a lot better than that, right? Amen. So bring them here. Um, you can drop them off uh, with our ushers or with our, our folks at the back. I think um, you're coming back on the third Sunday. So a third Sunday, you can put them in Nancy's hands if you like. <laughs> She'll be back here to make one more presentation. And we'll also have some uh, refreshments and things outside. And I'm sorry, in Ella White Hall afterwards for you celebrating and commemorating Foster Care Sunday. Maestro. Maestro.